As we gather here, like many of you, I, I see the faces of Palestinian friends under siege uh, in Bethlehem and Nablus, Jerusalem and Hebron, Ramallah and Janim, Bedouin friends in Han al Amr, Masafra Yata, uh, and others, other places we visited. We know these people. This is personal for us. And this is personal for me. This is a hard night. But I'm, I'm frustrated and uh, I'm angry. So this is a hard night. My, my, my heart tonight is uh, heavy. With a shadow cast over it. A shadow helplessness and hopelessness and I'm I'm not usually I'm not usually that kind of person as we gather here like many of you I, I see the faces of Palestinian friends under siege uh, in Bethlehem and Nablus Jerusalem and Hebron Ramallah and Janine Bedouin friends in Han al Amr Masafra Yata, uh, and others, other places we visited. We know these people. This is personal for us, and this is personal for me. You see, I, I'm tired of being asked about Hamas. I, I'm not going to be lectured anymore by people who, for the last 16 years, for the, for the last 75 years, didn't give a tinker's damn about Israeli night raids, house demolitions, illegal settlements or settler violence, targeted killings, indiscriminate bombings of innocent children, and more. I mean, I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you about Hamas as long as you want to include all the rest of this stuff. I just am not going to be put on the defensive anymore by critics who are aiding and abetting war crimes. So you'll have to forgive me tonight because it's a hard night. Recently, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, criticized Israel's population transfer and called for, quote, immediate humanitarian ceasefire, which resulted in Israel's denying visas to the UN officials a top State Department official and the director of the New York office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights resigned over the, quote, wholesale slaughter of the Palestinian people. The Israel lobby and its propaganda machine have been in overdrive, censoring criticism of Israel on campuses, in businesses, in communities, and meetings of Arab and Palestinian groups have been canceled by hotels citing, quote, you guessed it, security reasons, after pressure by Zionist groups. And there were complaints, too, made to Orchard Ridge about us gathering here tonight. You saw the police presence hired by Orchard Ridge at the request of their ownership. We thank uh, Orchard Ridge for standing with us. Millions of people, Jews, Christians, Muslims, people of goodwill worldwide, have spoken out. Today, more than 100,000 in Washington, D.C., and us here too, every week, protest Tuesdays at the Allen County Courthouse at 5 o'clock, demonstrating against Israel's assault. Gaza, 2.4 million people, trapped in a piece of land half the size of Allen County. 50% children under the age of 18. 10,000 dead, 40% of them children. Every 10 minutes, a child is killed in Gaza. The number rising every minute. While we're gathered here tonight, and I know we started late, but you know what? There are bombs dropping in Gaza. 
We're people of privilege. We can wait an extra 20 minutes. Bombs falling on the heads of innocent children. Homes and schools, ambulances and hospitals, press buildings and businesses and others. A 16-year cruel Israeli blockade, poisoning water, rationing food, preventing hospitals from receiving medical supplies, a pressure cooker, squeezed and squeezed, and these people brutalized and squeezed some more, and the world remains silent. Peace overtures rejected, nonviolent resistance rejected, George Floyd and Eric Garner both cried out, I can't breathe, before they died from the boot of a militarized police on their necks. And with their last breaths, under the rubble, Gazans cry out, I can't breathe, from the boot of a militarized regime on their necks, all funded by America and by your, by our tax dollars. We've got work to do right here at home. We used to call Gaza a ghetto. Then we called it an open-air prison, but it's wrong. That assumes people who live there are guilty of something. Then a laboratory where a trapped population is experimented on with new weapons and new technologies. Today, we call it a graveyard. And the corporate-owned media, the president and Congress too, both political parties, it doesn't matter. More money, more weapons for Israel? We used to call them hypocritical. Then they were complicit. Now we call them, rightly, we call them criminal, every single one, whether we voted for them or not. We used to call it a conflict. Then we called it an occupation. Then apartheid. Now, finally, we call it what it is, ethnic cleansing and genocide. And lest we think that I'm overstating the case, since 1948, genocide has been defined by the United Nations Genocide Convention as, quote, acts committed with the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. And by the way, this definition is displayed, among other places, at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. <clears throat> In 2012, that, that's 11 years ago. I did get the math right. Huh? In 2012, 11 years ago, the United Nations warned that Gaza would be unlivable in 2012, they said that. Where were CNN and MSNBC then? Where was the outcry from churches then? Where was the Obama-Biden administration then? Where was Congress then? And where have they been since? We know where they've been because we know where they're still where they're still today, where the Biden administration is in spades. And we're just not going to stand for it anymore. Not our name, Joe. No more, no more. Genocide still, three after unlivable. After unlivable. Justice and human rights and human dignity, they're all interconnected in Israel and Palestine, in the U.S., and in Indiana. 
whether it's LGBTQ rights, whether it's refugees, whether it's climate justice, whether it's interreligious cooperation, whether it's Israel and Palestine, all interconnected. Our morality is being tested. Our humanity is being tested. This is a time for moral clarity. This is our, ge our generation's Seneca Falls moment, Stonewall moment, our generation's Soweto moment, our generation's Selma moment, all in one. Where would we have stood back then? It's where we're standing now. Where are you standing? Justice takes sides. Our commitment to justice, especially during these days, must not waver. Our most difficult task is to speak the truth to a world full of people who benefit from the lie. So like I said, this is a hard night. I mean, it's a hard night for me. It's a hard night for Indiana Center. And it's so easy to lose hope. And yet, and yet, I find hope in our Palestinian friends who remain resilient and strong and resistant. I find hope in our Jewish voices of conscience who stand on the side of human rights and justice. I find hope in dreamers and artists and activists and all those who dream a better world and then find ways, big and small, to create the world they dream. And I, and really, I, I'm, I am sincere about this, truly. As I look around and see all of you and visit with you, I find, I find hope in you. Each one of us, right where we are, in our own unique ways, planting seeds of the beloved community. As I say each week in front of the Allen County Courthouse during our protest Tuesdays, we're here for our children, because all children are our children. We're here for a ceasefire. We're here for human dignity and self-determination. We're here for international law. We're here for human rights. And we're not going away. We're here to stay. Free Palestine, free Gaza, never again means never again for everybody.